Hi, this is Tom with Geek Seller, and I'm going to run you through our repricing tool. The Geek Seller repricer is used to help you maintain ownership of the buy box by adjusting your price within parameters that are set by you. In this video, I'm going to show you what these parameters are and how to set them. The easiest way to set up your repricing is at the item level. If you click on a product's title, it'll take you to the product details page where you can select the auto repricing tab and find the options shown here. Highlighted in green, you can see your minimum and maximum prices, which will determine the range within which we will adjust your price. The bid, highlighted in purple, is the dollar amount by which we will lower your price below the current best offer. If your bid is zero, we will set your price to match the best offer. If bid up is turned on, and you maintain control of the buy box for the number of days set by the interval, we will begin the bid up process. This interval should be at least one, otherwise our system will try to raise your price every 30 minutes, which is how often we check for price changes. For example, if your product is set to 127.50, and your competitor is offering the same product at 115.25, with these settings here, we will drop your price to 114.25 as your bid is $1. If you hold the buy box for two days as set by the interval, we will begin the bid up process. Bidding up works slightly different in Jet and Walmart. As in Walmart, they provide us with the next best offer whereas in JET, they do not. So in JET, when we begin the bid up process, we will raise your price to its maximum, 177.50, and then begin checking for lower prices, starting the whole process again. In Walmart, because they do provide us the next best offer, we will lower your price $1 below the next best offer, or leave it as it is if it's already where it needs to be. If there are no competing offers at the end of the bid up interval, we will raise your price to its maximum. While it is easier to perform these tasks using the panel, it's much faster to do it using a spreadsheet. You can produce this spreadsheet by either selecting the products you want to work on, then going to the bulk action menu and exporting that data to XLS or CSV, depending on your preference, or if you want to change the repricing settings for all of your products at once, you can do so by selecting the Download Repricing Data button highlighted here in purple. Product details like SKU, title, and product price will be pulled from your listing data, while pricing data will be pulled from the marketplace itself. The product price is the initial price you uploaded when you set up the product in Geek Seller while the retail price shows what is currently displayed for the product, likely set by our repricer if it's been turned on. We also provide a breakdown of the product and shipping and total prices to help you uh, determine if you need to change shipping costs in order to remain competitive and to show you what your competition is offering. The repricing data here shows exactly what you saw in the panel example on the other slide. The enabling columns here in M and N will recognize a zero for no and a one for yes, but the other columns work exactly the, way as the, the same way as the fields shown in the auto repricing tab of the product details page. To set these parameters, enter the values you want for the range bid intervals and amounts, and enter one to enable repricing and bid up, save the spreadsheet, and upload it back into the panel using the yellow import repricing data button. When products on Walmart are unpublished because of a pricing issue, and you have repricer enabled for that SKU, Geek Seller will automatically submit the minimum price to Walmart. Also, should the bid up option be enabled, we will automatically turn this feature off as it was your high prices that caused the item to be unpublished. 
I hope this helps explain the Geek Seller repricing tool. Have a wonderful day.